The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 9 a.m. Eastern Time, Tuesday morning. We got about 30 minutes to go until the start of trading. All the markets in positive territory. Quite the acceleration yesterday to end quite a week month of January. We begin February trading in slightly positive territory. You got the S&Ps right now up four points to kick off the session up. Uh, excuse me, trading at 4508 right now. Really remarkable when you look at the action, even just from last Thursday. I'm going to put this real quick. That's a five minute chart I have up here on the S&Ps. I'm going to jump to a 30 minute to get a 10 day move to bring in last Monday's action because you're talking about almost 300 S&P points from the low that we had on last Monday. We were right back down near that area last Friday. Remarkable. You were down at a price level of a low of about 4267. So you're talking about 250 S&P points just from Friday early. NASDAQ 100. You just had best two days in the NASDAQ 100 uh, since March of 2020, I believe. We'll pull that headline up in a few. Uh, but yeah, you're talking about 1,000 points from where we were on Friday's action. 13,833, make it 1,120 points to be exact. We're pushing 15,000 this morning on the NASDAQ 100, 14,953. You get the Dow up 20 points, back above 35,000, 35,018 in the Russell, up by one. 2025. Bitcoin nearing 39,000 right now, 38,940. We got the crew contract. Some slight negative action. Again, we're on a 30 minute chart right now. When you bring in last week's action, you see from about Wednesday, you have crew jumping around from about 86.50 up to 88.50, maybe a little bit above. You got a high there at 88.84 on Friday. Right now, technically, you have crude down almost a dollar at 87.20. You have gold catching a slight bid off the lows of Friday, quite the pullback. Uh, on the Federal Reserve statement last Wednesday, the gold contract spikes from 1854 down to 1780. Since then, we've spiked a bit. You're up nine dollars on the gold contract this morning. Silver's up 56 pennies, pushing 23 dollars. And notes and bonds right now got a little bit of higher price on the session. But you look at where we were two hours ago. You just gave up 10 ticks in the 10 year right now. You're talking about a 10 year positive three ticks on the session. We're talking about a yield right now back under 1.8 percent, 1.777 to be exact. We'll call it 1.78 percent to be uh, to, to round off that number. And we jump over to the volatility index. Talk about giving it up 2431. Now, I talked about in my program, you take a look at this VIX, you put it on a weekly, you take out the huge spike that we had at the beginning of the pandemic. You got to keep your eye on some of these spikes, folks, because when we were pushing 40 last Monday, OK, that's when that number hit 3894 last Monday when the market was accelerating to negative prices. You had to start realizing that we were pushing levels, folks, of usually a turnaround. That's what we got. You know, you push 40 on the VIX. You're talking about trading at levels that we hadn't traded at in all of 2021. And you were back to October of 2020. Only twice since the pandemic hit, when you had the VIX spike to about 80 and change, did you have the VIX trade where it above where it traded at on Monday? And since then, boy, talk about giving it up. You're trading at 2430 on the volatility index right now this morning. All right, let's jump around and see how some of the FANG stocks are trading this morning. Amazon back above 3,000, didn't take long. I mean, check this out. From last Friday, folks, you got Amazon trading up $250. You're pushing, what is that? Yeah, 9%, something crazy like that. I mean, $275 would be 10% on the dot. Quite the acceleration as they come into their numbers. Amazon this morning gonna be cheated, positive by about 10 bucks with the market this morning a bit higher. Apple shares trading higher as well, 174.79. You closed yesterday, basically right where we're trading at right now. All right, let's jump around to some of the headlines we got going on. Uh, NASDAQ futures recover, will global stocks rally? S&P 500 contract futures fluctuate after two-day equity rally. Fed officials caution against faster 
than necessary tightening. Lots going on in the market right now, but let's jump around to some of the stocks and we'll kick it off with AT&T. They're gonna spin off Warner Media. Uh, $43 billion Discovery Media merger cuts the dividend, AT&T. They're gonna spin that off. Uh, $43 billion transaction to merge its media properties with Discovery. AT&T shareholders, they're gonna get 71% of the new Warner Brothers Discovery Company, and they're gonna receive 0.24 shares of Warner Brothers Discovery for each AT&T share they own. Um, yeah, interesting action. When you talk about streaming and the likes, there's your action on AT&T, down from 25.50 to about $24. You're gonna open lower this morning. Discovery gonna open uh, lower as well, as both of those stocks getting a little bit punished this morning. Other news out there. Exxon Mobil out with their numbers. Fourth quarter profit tops estimate. Oil and gas prices soar. Yeah, as we know, right? Um, these oil companies better be making money right now with where oil is. And there's Exxon on that news. Uh, 77.46, they spike too. They give it up. Looks like you're going to open a little bit higher. But, you know, all things considered, you just had Exxon trading at $60 to kick off the year. You just traded up 15 bucks. That's a 25% pop, folks, to begin 2021. Lofty expectations, I'd say they uh, would be just fine if that stock just held on to the gains it had this year so far on their earnings. And it looks, too, as you're a little bit higher on ExxonMobil earnings this morning. FedEx, they're going to suspend some domestic express freight services on the Omicron hit. Folks, I talked about it yesterday. You can hear me. I'm a little bit stuffed up myself getting over a case of COVID last year. Uh, last year, I wish. Last week. Uh, this week. Last week with my family. And yeah, I was talking about last week, as I'm about to cop, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> I'll, I'll reset myself. I was talking yesterday uh, for the jobs number coming on Friday for January, expect to see a hit, man, I'm living it. You know, I had uh, kids in the house, the fiance was out with COVID. The disruption in businesses, folks, that takes place when you gotta be out, you gotta, I mean, even working from home with a family, with kids, um, the number of cases hitting, it is almost impossible not to disrupt normal life. You're seeing it right now in FedEx. There's nothing they can do, folks. You got people out, you got people sick, maybe their family's sick, maybe they need to isolate for a few days or they want to. Nonetheless, they can't get the number of employees they need. So on Tuesday, today, suspended domestic express freight services due to a staff shortage as cases of Omicron variant of the coronavirus rose. Now, think about if they are like suspending services at the core of their business, what does that say about the possibility of hiring for the month? Right? You have to imagine this is going to have a pretty severe hit on the January number. The one thing I will say is probably going to be a little transitory and uh, FedEx trading higher. So, getting into it, last month the company had warned that rising cases of the variant had caused staff shortage. They suspended that. Yeah, international economy freight pickup services, that had been paused earlier. That's going to resume on Monday. Uh, severe winter storms around the country, staff shortages, several U.S. airlines are canceling things. Yeah, and unfortunately, we're still pushing over 2,000 deaths a day to COVID. Uh, but FedEx, we'll get into a little bit more because I imagine there's more going on than that as FedEx is going to be up $8 on the open this morning. Now, this stock, you take a look at the weekly, right? You're going to open at about 255 quite the pullback here from 319 down to about 212 uh, almost back to a 50% of the entire run up you had from COVID this morning, though, you're gonna open up about nine bucks higher. It's 254 for FedEx shares. Oh, you know what that was? That's UPS earnings, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. We'll get into that afterwards. So FedEx trading higher on you, UPS earnings, UPS, check that out, right? From 200 to 220. Uh, we'll go over that in a little bit, folks. Uh, we're gonna come back. We'll be talking to our man, Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade Fast Market, folks. Don't miss it. We'll be right back in three minutes. Stay tuned. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. 
First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps up two points right now. NASDAQ 100 up 32. The Dow barely in positive territory, up nine points above 35,000 35,006. Russell just sneaking into the negative by one point right now at 2022. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hicks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, fast market on the TD Ameritrade Network. Kevin Hicks, Tom White, and the team breaking down the day's market action, walking you through hypothetical trade setups. Folks, we're talking options, we're talking defined risk, we're talking earnings season, we're talking non-farm payrolls on Friday. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Yeah, there's a lot going on today. It doesn't get any, you know, the pace doesn't slow down as we get to a Tuesday. I mean, this is going to be obviously any day that you can have Google Alphabet, AMD, Starbucks, like Folio, we'll do a presentation on Starbucks. Obviously, we'll be talking about Google Alphabet. So these shows on days like this, Tommy, they write themselves. I mean, there's so much to go over on a day like this. It's pretty remarkable, Kevin. I haven't talked to you in a few days, man. We've had a lot happening since I talked to you. I think yeah. last Wednesday, man, before Chairman Powell uh, had a chance uh, to voice his opinions, let's just put it that way, and send the market into a little bit of volatility. But, man, talk about a resurgence, kicking things off Friday into Monday. Now, Kevin, we come into uh, non-farm payrolls for Friday. Uh, Part of the discussion out there is that the expectation is a pretty weak number of 150,000. We got the Omicron variants putting a little bit of hurting on maybe the expectation. What's your expectation as you look forward to that number in terms of where we are and maybe how the market may react to a number if it's going to cause any angst at all? What are you, what are you looking yeah. for on Friday there? Some of the expectations are for pretty modest numbers. But I think the biggest part of this, Tommy, will be the wages number. I think... The wages number will drive interest rates, which will drive inflation talk, which will drive the, the these markets going forward, Tommy. So I think the wages data in the non-farm payroll, which it was 0.6 a month ago, they're looking, the consensus right now is for it to be up 0.5. That's a number much like the income and outlays number last Friday. Remember, calm inflation numbers 
the market will really like and embrace. And I think when you look at a day like today, you know, 15,000 in the NASDAQ is a pretty important number. It's like 15,013 is right at the 200-day moving average, Tommy. So a move through that and a close through that will be pretty bullish. And so I think this week, you know, it's going to get a little hectic. So obviously, not on payrolls and unemployment, number one data point in my opinion of the month, Tommy. And so the wages, I think, will be a key part of looking at uh, yields going forward. You make some great points, man. That's why I asked the question. And uh, yeah, I, I agree. You laid it out very well, Kevin, because I started trying to do the gymnastics in my own head yesterday, man, saying, okay, what if it is a really you know, weak number? I don't think that's going to have as big of an impact because um, of the potential influence of this last variant, hopefully, that we deal with for a last spike. And maybe um, that's not the focus because it probably shouldn't be. With unemployment at 3.9%, uh, the focus should be on you know stable prices, right? Fed has two mandates, man, maximum employment and stable prices. Boy, one of those is, is roaring its head right now and uh, it's not maximum employment because that's where we are, man. It's the stable prices they gotta get a hold of. We're in earnings as you talk about UPS out there with some pretty strong earnings this morning, Kevin. They're pushing all time highs right now at 220. Uh, you got FedEx out there trading higher as well, but they're going to have to put a stop on some of their services because of the Omicron variant putting a hurting on some of the, the just ability to have workers in the short term right now. Uh, pretty remarkable when you look at these shipping companies, UPS in particular, that we're pushing all time highs right now. You got FedEx a good 60, 70 bucks off of the all time highs. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, it's not really surprising that these shipping companies are doing extremely well. Just like it's not surprising that ExxonMobil had a really good quarter when crude oil moves up like it does. So, uh, you know, the, these companies, though, a lot of our discussion yesterday on UPS was margins and how are they going to grow margins yeah. going forward. And, you know, their CEO's uh, mantra is better, not bigger. Right. So they're trying to improve their company from within. And, you know, like Folio did a great presentation yesterday on how the happiness in UPS is significantly higher than the happiness at FedEx. So, you know, this is a company that is focusing on small to medium and businesses, focusing on health care, doing other things. So, uh, yeah, not really surprising that they had a really good quarter, Tommy. Pretty cool, man. I listened to part of that and, and I just was thinking in my own head, Kevin, and I don't have a lot of experience as in just customer. I don't I don't ship a lot with FedEx, right? I don't get a lot of packages with FedEx um, that show up at my door. So maybe that's part of it. But for some reason in my head, I almost have a better perception of UPS somehow that they've got that done. I don't know how that happens, but in my, maybe I'm getting more packages on UPS. Maybe I'm seeing those brown vehicles running around more often. Um, but somehow in my own head, perception, perception is everything sometimes. So we go to Google, of course, Kevin. I'm jumping over to the Analyze tab right now on the Thinkorswim platform. I got Google up. We got a $118 move priced into this equity, man. Little bit of a pullback to put it lightly from 3000 to 2500 But do you want to give us a little tease? for maybe your opinion as we come into Google Alphabet and what you'll be looking for for them uh, this afternoon? Well, you know, it's a combination, right, of not only did some of these stocks uh, go down because of questions about their business going forward and weakness like Amazon, but there was also a global sell-off that affected some of these names. And what did it do? At one point, Google last week was extremely oversold. Now it's come back. And it's resting right at, just above, to start the day, it's 200-day moving average, right? It broke well significantly below that. The 200-day moving average right now is 27.06. It, it nice. closed 27.13, so it got through there yesterday. I think the next move you got to look at, Tommy, is you know up above the 50-day moving average, which is about 28.39, which we're going to open – really close to that right now. The bid yeah. is 27.40. So, yeah, this is going to get a little interesting going in. But, you know, they, it's such a big company. What You know, that there's going to be a lot of metrics that they're going to look at, Tommy. So, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a fun day, that's for sure. Oh, these tech companies, man. You mentioned Amazon. I pulled up Amazon. Amazon. Amazon's up, Kevin, almost 9, 10%, 9%, I think, since Friday's low. It's not Tuesday trading hasn't even begun yet, man. Um, just mammoth moves across the board. Well, Kevin, 
We look forward to the program as always, man. I'm sure it's gonna be a good one today, this week. We got so much happening with earnings, with non-farm payroll. We appreciate the conversation as always, man, and we'll be watching at 12 noon today. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. You too, Kevin. Take care, folks. Tune in every day. Outstanding program, Fast Market on the TD Ameritrade Network. The host, Kevin Hanks, Tom White, they do an outstanding job. And uh, when we get a week like non-farm payrolls and you throw in there, we get, like you said, AMD, you got Google. They're going to be going over Starbucks as well. Check out the program if you haven't, folks. It's outstanding. I've learned a tremendous amount myself from uh, Kevin, Tom, and the team over there. Markets right now. We're higher, folks. S&P's up about six points. We got the NASDAQ. They're going to kick off February trading in positive territory. NASDAQ 100, 14,955 right now. You get the NASDAQ futures, not the NASDAQ 100. NASDAQ futures uh, pushing 15,000 as well. You're talking about 14,936. Dow futures back above 35,000 as well. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming right back from the market open. I'll be back in three minutes. fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the tiger's den trading room only at tfnn.com the tiger's den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den trading room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. We got the S&P up about five points right now, trading at 4509 NASDAQ 100, barely in the green by about 20 points right now. Dow up 27 right now. We jump over to some of the stocks that are making moves this morning. We check out AT&T. AT&T opens down 4.8% this morning. We got Discovery opening down 6.7%. Exxon Mobil holding on to the gains up about 8 tenths percent. As Kevin Hanks put man, some strong numbers. Um, but boy, as I stated at the start of the show, you're up about, what is that, 25% to kick off 2021 and holding on to those gains through earnings with some pretty lofty expectations to say the least we jump over to ups <coughs> there's a pop for you this thing was trading at 220 when i was just talking to kevin yeah and there's your pop up to 225 you're up 11.5 percent on ups man oh man jump over to fed fedex uh, a little bit of a different reaction. FedEx up 2.6%. Now, what's interesting is that they suspend their domestic express freight services on the Omicron hit, but they're trading higher on UPS's beat out there. Excuse me, folks. Still getting over this thing a little bit. Um, but you can see that even in the face of suspending services, the market not going to get phased, folks, as that is a temporary hit. If we miss on the non-farm payroll number on Friday, that's going to be a temporary hit as well. But Kevin Hanks made some great points. Uh, the wage number is not going to be probably as skewed as maybe the net gain or loss number could. It's still going to be impacted, though, folks, um, by this Omicron hit. So I would not expect the market to have too big of a reaction to Friday's number, considering that the Fed is not going to have too big of a reaction to Friday's number. <coughs> That's where I look into things, right? Um, nonetheless, we got the markets actually turning over a bit. All the markets into the red just that quick. All right, let's jump around to what else we have going on out here. Getting into those UPS numbers. So pretty strong numbers in a big way there. Uh, and what also the market love and I did want to talk about hiking the quarterly dividend to a buck fifty to a share. Uh, that's a hike by forty nine percent. Net income rising to a record three point one five billion in ninety days. Not bad. Three fifty nine a share versus three ten. Uh, yeah, they got a bunch of expenses, of course, is what they're talking about. So when you talk about net income beating, that's what the market loves to hear. Because as Kevin put it, margins, margins, margins. And how about it? Adjusted margins of 13.7% in 2022, above 2021 levels, despite rising labor and fuel costs. How they did it, I'm not sure, but they did it, folks. They got rising margins in the face of a delivery company with crude pushing $100 a barrel. Uh, they're forecasting $102 billion in 2022, beating the estimates of about $100 billion. Just staggering numbers across the board for UPS there. ExxonMobil, when you get into their numbers, 205 a share. Market was looking for a buck ninety-three revenue. Short though, 84.97 billion market was looking for almost 92 billion uh, in the same quarter a year ago, 46.54 billion. How about a difference there, right? Uh, big numbers for ExxonMobil. They hold on to their gains that they've had this year so far. All right, jumping around to other stocks, we have AMC out with their numbers. They were trading higher in the pre-market. Let's see if the meme stocks can hold on to it. Uh, yes, holding on to those gains. Up about 9% for AMC shares trading at 17.52. You were as high as 18.88. Let's see how GameStop's trading, just out of curiosity. A little bit higher as well, up about 3% as the Reddit stocks catch a little bit of a bid so far this morning. We talked about UPS and Exxon Mobil. You have Sirius Satellite Radio out with their numbers. They beat quarterly earnings of $0.08 cents a share. They beat by a penny. Revenue came in above forecast as well. Special dividend. Market always likes special dividends, unless they're covering for bad news. Uh, but there is Sirius up 7 tenths percent. You take a look at this equity, just chopping around for the longest time this year. You back it up even further, right? We've been in a consolidation between 6 and 650 on Sirius, basically for the entire part of the last year, which is remarkable. This stock just chops around in that little refined area. All right, what else we got going on here? Sirius, Sirius Logic, they beat, uh, yes, by 40 cents. So about 254, semiconductor company revenue above estimates, issued stronger than expected current quarter revenue guidance, but not quite living up to expectations. CRUS is their symbol. Yeah, down about 6%, putting it back on a 15 minute to see the action. They come out with their numbers spiked to 102. Conference call. Mm, maybe some outlook worries there as 
Cirrus Logic down 6.3%. As we have all the markets slip into the positive right now. Jump on over to Bitcoin. Bitcoin up at about 39,000 right now, up 500 bucks on the session. We check out Ethereum shares. Quite the rebound for these crypto uh, coins. 2801 for Ethereum. All right, let's jump around to some of the other stocks that people like to take a look at. We got Tesla after Tesla accelerates higher. Well, yesterday in some upgrade news, Tesla giving back marginal $2 to the negative side this morning at 934. We'll take a look at some of the FANG stocks. We got Google shares up 1.5%. Now, as I mentioned, you jump over. They're out with their numbers after the bell tonight. We got $117 move priced into their options. You take a look at this equity. You put it back on the daily. Quite the pop from a 2400 handle, 2492 to be exact. Just like that, you're up 250 bucks. You're up 10% from where we were trading on January 24th. Uh, we'll see where Google goes after the bell. But $117 move priced in. You're already $35 higher on Google shares to kick things off. We jump over to AMD. Quite the pullback for AMD recently. You've bounced off the $100 price point. You got just recently, a couple days ago, right? Yeah, January 28th, you're trading at 114. Pretty remarkable, you give it back that quickly. We jump over to the Analyze tab. AMD, pretty decent move. You're talking about a 6 to 7% move on AMD price stand, $7.58 as they will be out with their numbers after the bell as well. All right, continuing down the line, uh, Pfizer and BioNTech, they're gonna push uh, their yeah, they are going to file for permission for the COVID vaccine for children under the age of five um, for emergency, emergency use authorization. And that could come as quickly as the end of February. We jump over to those two stocks. Pfizer up about half a percent with the market. No real huge reaction on there. BNTX, I think, is that BioNTech? Yes, it is up 3.3% uh, there on that news. All right, other articles we got pulled up. Let's see, yeah, let's talk a little bit well, first, let's jump here. So Home Depot, uh, they're going to boost spring hiring 25% with kicker job offers. Looks like Home Depot, they got to get some more workers in there to combat the dearth of workers. The retailer has sped up the application process so it can make an offer within a day, 24 hours. I mean, this is what you got to do if you want to succeed, folks. The company declined to share how it's making quicker hiring decisions. The only thing I'll say is... You tighten up that process and you leave a, loop, a few loopholes in there. You might be hiring workers that you maybe did not hire or would not have hired previously when you put a little bit more time and effort into sorting out who you want to bring into your company. But nonetheless, they need employees. They probably need them ASAP right now. Uh, and they're going to do that as they're going to try and uh, boost the spring hiring by 25%. The chain aims to hire 100,000 associates for part-time and full-time positions. Uh, that is 25% above the 80,000 they usually look for. Revenue has surged, of course, Home Depot during the pandemic. You pull up Home Depot, quite a pullback though. I mean, I had a Fibonacci number on here, folks, and yeah, we almost made it back to the full 100%. We actually broke below the 786 on that move on January 24th. We're right back to almost the 50%. Now, 372, you can see we chopped around at 372 from basically the end of October through the middle of November, just accelerated right through that area as the market sold off, and you're back to about 369 right now, up about $2.50. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back in three minutes. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
Pedro White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps right now sneaking into negative territory. You're negative by three points right now, trading at 4,500 on the dot. Tech stocks giving it up a little bit as well. Look at that sell-off. You just sold off 130 points, 14,950. You give up basically all of the gains from overnight, and you're right back to where we were at about 9 p.m. Eastern time yesterday. You're talking about lows at last night. Let's get the exact tick low on the NASDAQ 100 futures, 14,818. We just traded right now down to 14,815, so just below that number on the NASDAQ 100. All right, jumping over to rents. We're all aware of this, but man, when you see these numbers over and over, it's pretty remarkable. Rate inflation, excuse me, rent inflation shows that landlords have the upper hand again. I mean, yeah, I guess so. Not a pretty uh, startling article uh, headline. The Federal Reserve's rate hikes could add upward pressure on residential leases. Well, that makes sense because if you got higher um, yields, you got higher rates, what's going to happen? Buying the same property is going to yield a higher payment. Therefore, if you're talking about, you know, you buy a $300,000 property, maybe you're paying $2,500 a month, okay? So you have to rent it out at $2,500 a month. Well, if you buy a $300,000 property and rates go up to 5% and you've got to pay $2,700 a month, guess how much you're going to be charging for rent, folks? You're going to be trying at least to charge $2,700 a month. It makes sense. Some of the numbers in here, when you get into it, Wage and rate inflation, okay? Wages not keeping up with rent. Tough to keep up with rent when you got it rising at the rate that you're talking about here. Um, average hourly earnings, they are above it, okay? When you look at it, you're talking about 6%, but I don't know, folks. You look at where you are, it matters, okay? They're not keeping up in Tampa, that's for sure. Uh, they might be keeping up in the big cities like Boston and New York, which is skewing this number a bit. Average hourly earnings, you're talking about up about 6%, rate numbers up about 4%, but boy, you get into where we're talking about. Let me slide down here. Look at these numbers. Rent of shelter inflation in large metro metropolitan statistical areas. This is the CPI component as of the December of last year, year over year change. Tampa, 9.6%. Phoenix, double digits, 10.1%. I mean, these are huge metropolitan areas, folks. These are not one-off small areas. Atlanta, 
Detroit, Denver, Dallas, San Diego, Philadelphia, Miami, St. Louis, Minneapolis, right? All of those pushing 4%. Yeah, and then you get down to the biggest cities. Boston, 2.9. Uh, San Francisco, the lowest on this list at 0.6. New York at 1.2. And D.C. at 1.8. Startling numbers in a big way, though, when you look at those numbers. And we'll see where they go. But it is not stopping, folks. Um, Postal Service change of address records suggest people over the past two years have been fleeing cities with the highest cost of living for relatively more affordable ones, which helps explain why the latter have already seen rents surge. Not surprising there, folks. That is just human nature that you're going to be going to an area that potentially is a slightly lower cost of living uh, in a big way. And quality life in Florida, folks, you can't beat it. It was 70 degrees out yesterday uh, after almost pushing 29 degrees overnight two days ago. We got some cold Cold weather overnight right now. We're in one of the coldest parts of the year for us, February 1st. Uh, still almost 70 degrees in the middle of the day coming with that. But boy, you got some big rents rising in a big way in this area, 9.6%. And I'll tell you folks, I have it. Uh, I have a duplex in Tampa. And as they say, the rent is going up, folks, because that's the market. That's how it works. It's just like, that's the deal. Uh, people are coming to Florida. They're coming to Tampa. They're coming to beautiful St. Petersburg. And yeah, the market is reflecting it so, and that is not going to decrease anytime soon, I imagine, folks. I'm not sure it can sustain 10% just in terms of people being able to afford living, but boy, you're seeing it in a big way. All right, we jump to a little bit of uh, entertaining news. How about this one? Talking about weather, okay? Talking about weather. How about a lightning bolt stretching almost 500 miles across three states? This is talking about happened in April of 2020, all right? So we're going back almost two years ago now. But just remarkable. And uh, they said this got nothing to do with climate change, okay? It has to do with somewhat, they got better tracking technology probably now than they had previously to catch all these. But you're talking about a lightning bolt that stretches 500 miles across three states. Look at that thing, remarkable. So this is a satellite image showing a thunderstorm complex which was found to contain the longest single flash that covered a horizontal distance on record across parts of the southern United States. That is April 29th. 2020, uh, 477.2 miles to be exact, Texas, Louisiana, and Mississippi in April of 2020. Previous number uh, was 440 miles sent in, tw excuse me, uh, in 2018. Uh, also in 2020, a single lightning flash over Uruguay and northern Argentina lasted 17 seconds. Uh, the previous record was 16.7 seconds. Normally, lightning doesn't last uh more than a few seconds and goes about 10 miles. Uh, this lightning bolt, they said, yeah, cloud to cloud. So several thousand feet above the ground. So it did not reach the ground. Nobody was in danger. These records not linked to climate change spotted and confirmed thanks to new satellite tracking technology. Both regions, where they're talking about the Uruguay region up here, yeah, Uruguay and northern Argentina, or you're talking about the area over Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, uh, both regions are two of the few places in the world prone to the type of intense storms that can produce so-called mega flashes. Pretty remarkable though. Did not realize lightning could stretch that far. Uh, Mother nature, nothing like it folks, nothing like it at all. All right, let's jump around as we get this market turning negative. You just had the NASDAQ 100 trade down 150 points. Let's check out some of the FANG stocks and see how they're trading. We kick it off with Apple. Apple shares this morning. Giving it back down 1.1%. We got Google shares this morning ahead of their numbers, holding on to the gains. Looks like they're not willing to sell off Google yet ahead of their numbers like they are Apple. Google up half a percent right now. Tesla, after yesterday's rise, giving back some of those gains down about 2%. Microsoft down about 1.3% with the tech stocks trading lower as well. We jump over to some of the streaming stocks. Netflix, quite a day yesterday, the upside. Look to open higher, but they give it back on the open to be flat for Netflix shares. Disney had quite an acceleration yesterday as well, holding on to some of those gains up about a tenth of percent. Uh, quite the resurgence in terms of even I was talking about yesterday in my newsletter and on the program. I mean, you're going to be seeing a different world, folks, when we come out of Omicron. I mean, you saw Uber accelerate higher yesterday as well. These are two stocks we have in my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options. Uh, Uber up another 1% today. Uh, just getting over about a COVID myself, my family. And if you didn't catch the program yesterday, folks, I was talking about, you know, we've had the vaccines for a while. Many people have been able to make decisions for themselves where if you're not around kids that are unvaccinated and you're just around yourself and maybe you're vaccinated and you're comfortable, I mean, you could pretty much get back to life, is my opinion. 
as having two kids under the age of five in my household did, did not have the option to get vaccinated yet, we were trying to give them the opportunity to get vaccinated before their eventual, probably eventual exposure to COVID and probably Omicron. Uh, didn't quite make it, unfortunately. But point being, now that we've got the natural immunity to Omicron with vaccines for the adults, it is going to be a game changer. I mean, I talked about, you know, maybe maybe now we're finally comfortable being around larger groups of people with unvaccinated children. Um, and so maybe this is a game changer for travel, for people in large groups. I mean, if you watch the NFL playoffs this weekend, folks, and you saw uh, Kansas City or L.A., didn't look like a pandemic, man. Those were packed houses, rightfully so. Um, so keep that in mind. These travel stocks... We'll see. We'll take a little bit of a look at some of these travel stocks when we get back. Airbnb, you know, they were accelerating higher, folks. I wasn't the only one. Yesterday, you had these travel stocks trading higher and they're continuing today. Pay attention to that one. We got a rotation going on. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now back about 4,500. A little bit of two-way action to kick things off. You're negative by two points on the session. Dow back positive by 31. We got tech stocks back above 14,800. We're trading at 14,840, negative by 70 points on the session. And sad news in the world of football as Tom Brady makes it official and he is retiring, folks. Tom Brady uh, officially announces his retirement. Had read and reported last weekend. Um, 
And yeah, nonetheless, it is confirmed now. As we know, a remarkable career. Can't believe at 44 years old, this guy is still playing. I'm 41 years old right now. I turn 42 uh, next month. Cannot imagine playing a 17-game NFL season two years from right now. Three years from right now, I'd have to go um, on that body. And we all know his accolades um, in terms of maybe the greatest out there. I would say so. Many do. But really remarkable when you look at that. Of course, he jumps to Tampa and wins a championship there last year. Great season this season, too. Outstanding final game uh, for them as well. But he goes out as the passing leader and touchdown. He had more passing yards and more touchdowns than any other QB at the age of 44 this year. Uh, yeah, he did not win an NFL championship. That would have been the exclamation point going out on top for sure. But man, talk about going out on top. Can't imagine 44 years old, most passing yards and most touchdowns all season. Uh, He's in the running for NFL MVP. Aaron Rodgers seems to be uh, the fan favorite to win that. But you can't argue with 44 years old passing yard leader and touchdown leader. Uh, sad to see him go, but quite a career for Mr. Brady. All right, back to the markets. Let's take one more final look at Google as we await their earnings after the bell tonight, up about half a percent. We got AMD out with their numbers, I believe, as well. Yes, we do. AMD trading back to where they opened uh, up about a tenth of a percent. We take a look at some of the stocks with action this morning. UPS continuing higher, up 13.7% so far. FedEx up about 4% excuse me, on the heels of those UPS numbers as well. All right, folks, thanks so much for tuning in. Start your trading day with me. Stay tuned. We got live programming all day. It's going to be an interesting one. We got a two-way two -day, two market, folks. Basil Chapman's up next. We got our man Larry Pesavento live at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Fast market at noon with Kevin Hinks. Steve Rhodes at 1 o'clock. Dave White at 2 o'clock. And Tom O'Brien, my dad, wraps it up live from 3 till 4. Have a great Tuesday, everybody.